This is section 4 for graphing sine and cosine functions. Let's start out by graphing y equals sine of theta. And here are all the values that we're plugging in for theta. Well, the sine of 0 is 0. Sine of pi over 6 is a half or 0 0.5. Sine of pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2, which is about 0 0.7. This is the square root of 3 over 2. And then the sine of pi over 2 is 1. So over here on the right side, we have graphs set up to graph sine. So we have 0, 0. Pi over 6 is a half. Pi over 4 is the 0 0.7. Pi over 3 is the 0 0.866, about, let's say, right there. Pi over 2 is 1. And then we have some symmetry going on here where this is 0 0.5 and then this is 0. Now, here is a half a period of sine. I missed the points, but it should be this nice, smooth curve. And then we have very similar values except negative, where this is 0.5. Uh, we have the 0.7 here, the 0.86. Here's the negative one. These are negatives. And then we have some symmetry going on right here. And then this should be a nice smooth curve as well. So there is the graph of sine. And you can see a, a really nice one uh, that I used. You know, I used a computer to come up with that one. Well, cosine is going to graph very similarly, except instead of starting at 0, 0, we start up here at 1. And we have, here's the square root of 3 over 2. Here's the square root of 2 over 2. There's the 1 half. Uh, so you end up, when you plot all the points, you end up with a graph that looks like that. It was very similar to sine, except we start up at 1 instead of starting at 0. Let's look at the properties of the sine function. The domain is negative infinity to infinity. You can take the sine of anything. The range is negative 1 to 1. Sine never gets higher than 1 and never gets lower than negative 1 crosses the x-axis, or uh, crosses the y-axis at 0, crosses the x-axis at every pi. So at 0, pi, uh, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, and so on. Continuity, continuous everywhere. Uh, symmetry, this is an odd function. So if we pick a point and we go through the origin, we should find its corresponding value or corresponding point. We have a maximum of 1 at pi over 2, and then, uh, then take one trip around the circle, and you hit another maximum. The minimum at 3 pi over 2, then take one trip around the circle, and you hit another one. The end behavior is the limit as x approaches negative infinity or positive infinity doesn't exist, and because this graph oscillates between negative 1 and 1. Vertical dilations affect the amplitude of sinusoidal functions. Uh, we have amplitudes of sine and cosine function. The amplitude of a sinusoidal function is half the distance between the maximum and the minimum values of the function, or half the height of the wave. So if this is the midline right there, uh, the amplitude is from the midline to the top or the midline to the bottom. Describe how the graphs of f of x and g of x are related, then find the amplitude of g of x and sketch two periods of both functions on the same coordinate axes. So, uh, we have f of x is cosine, g of x is one-third of that. So we have a, a vertical, vertical shrink of one-third. So let's graph cosine. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So we need to go up to one for the first, for f of x. And we need to go to one-third for g of x. Now, cosine starts at 1, and then goes to the midline, then it goes down to negative 1, back to the midline, and then back up to 1. And then we repeat that process going to the left. So here is f of x. And then g of x is the exact same thing, except we don't go up to 1. We just go up to 1 third, then 0, negative 1 third, 0, and then 1 third. Uh, so we go here down to negative one-third to zero, and back to one-third. So here is g of x. Describe how the graphs of f of x and g of x are related, then find the amplitude of g of x and sketch two periods of both functions on the same coordinate axis. So we have a vertical, vertical stretch of five. Uh, so we have, we want to be up here at five for g of x, and we'll be here at 1 for f of x. Now, this is sine. Sine starts at 0. 
So there's, we just need one, two, three, four points, right? So this is negative two pi, this is two pi. So sine starts at zero, goes up to the top, back to zero, down the bottom, back to zero. So there's one period of sine, and then we need another period, and we'll just go back the other direction. So here is two periods of sine. Well, now we're going to do the exact same thing, except instead of going up to one, we'll go up to five, zero, uh, down to negative five, back to zero. There's one period, and we'll go back the other way one period to get a total of two periods for sine. There we go. If A is less than zero, the graph of the sinusoidal function is reflected in the x-axis. So in other words, if we have y equals sine of x, sine starts at zero and goes up, well, y equals negative sine of x starts at zero but goes down, there would be negative sine x, reflection over the x-axis. Describe how the graphs of f of x and g of x are related, and of course we're going to sketch both of them. So uh, we need to reflect over the x-axis and stretch vertically by 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So we're down here at negative 4 up here at 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. 2, 3, 4. So this is negative 2 pi, and this is 2 pi. Now let's graph f of x. Cosine starts at 1, goes to 0, negative 1, 0, and then 1. So here's one period of f of x, 0, negative 1, 0, and 1. So here's the, the second period of f of x. Well, now we need to reflect that over uh, the x-axis but and also stretch. So 1 would go to negative 1, but then stretching it takes it to negative 4. So we go to 0, 4, 0, negative 4. So this is cosine, one period of, of uh, g of x. And we go 0, 4, 0, and then back to negative 4. So there's another period right there. Periods of sine and cosine function. The period of a sinusoidal function is the distance between any two sets of repeating points on the graph of the function. So this, if you pick a point on the wave, when you get back to that point, now that's from above, so from above, that's going to be one period of the graph. For y equals a sine bx plus c plus d, and y equals a cosine bx plus c plus d, where b does not equal zero, the period is 2 pi over the absolute value of b, because 2 pi is the normal period uh, for sine and cosine. Describe how the graphs of f of x and g of x are related, then find the period of g of x and sketch at least one period of each function on the same coordinate axes. So we're going to shrink, actually, excuse me, stretch. We're going to stretch uh, horizontally by 2. Remember, you got to think reciprocal. So now normally, uh, the, period, uh, the period of cosine is equal to 2 pi, but we're going to divide by, usually we call it k, where this is equal to the cosine of uh, k times x, where k is a half. So we have 2 pi divided by 1 half. Now we're going to multiply the top and bottom by 2, so the period now, instead of being uh, 2 pi, is now 4 pi. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4 marks still, but instead of this being out at 2 pi, it's now out at 4 pi. This is a cosine, so we're up at uh, 1 and down at negative 1. So we need to get to 2 pi to graph f of x. So 1, 2, 3, 4 marks. So this, this is f of x. Cosine starts at 1, goes to 0, down to negative 1, back to 0, and back up at 1. So this is f of x. Now we need g of x that's been stretched horizontally. So it still starts at 1, but now here's the first mark, here's the second, here's the third, and here's the fourth. And you can see that we have stretched f of x in a horizontal fashion. Graph the following. y equals negative 3 sine of 2x. Let's get the period first. The period is 2 pi over 2, which is pi. So 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is negative pi, and this is pi. Now we're going to reflect sine over the x-axis, and we're going to go all the way up to 3 and down to negative 3. 
Sine starts at zero, but would go up to three. But since we have the negative, we're going to reflect over the x-axis. So this is one period of our graph. And let's go the other direction. Zero, negative three, back to zero there. Now that is two periods of the graph. Y equals negative cosine x over three. Let's get the period first. Period is uh, two pi over one third, so six pi. So one, two, three, four. This is now six pi instead of two pi. One, two, three, four. So this is negative six pi right there. Now it's going to be negative cosine, so we have to reflect this over the x-axis. That's still one, that's negative one. The amplitude has not changed. Well, normally cosine starts at one, so now we're going to start this one at negative one. Zero, one, zero, negative one. Uh, so that's zero, that's going to be one, zero, and negative one. So here's two periods of our graph.